everyone. I am very happy to welcome our inaugural guest today. Um, he's my dear friend and also fellow member of the Zen Trio. He's the N in Zen, Nara Kaknazarian. Uh, if you don't know him already, you really should. He is a fantastic cellist, first prize winner of the Tchaikovsky competition in 2011, and also a fellow BBC New Generation artist, which is how we met in 2015. He's my all-time favorite cellist and a really, really close friend. Welcome, Narek. Thanks, Esther. Thanks a lot. It's, <laughs> it's a pleasure and honor to be the inaugural guest in this uh, wonderful project of yours. Happy to talk with my dear friend, <laughs> my beloved fellow member of Zen Trio, the, the E from Zen. <laughs> <laughs> How was the experience for, for you, like being back in Armenia for an extended period of time? I realized that our situation was very, very similar because uh, pandemic um, forced or not even forced, but gave us both opportunity to be in our homelands, our mm -hmm. motherlands, like where we are originally from. Being at home and in, in your culture with your people for, for that much time, that was really a mind-blowing experience and really a revelation for me because I, uh, I discovered um, my homeland from different perspective, different, different angle. And actually, uh, this pandemic made me realize how connected I am to, to Armenia how um, how much I want to be there. In fact, uh, this time pandemic made me come to a decision to, to move to Armenia, to live in Armenia. And I mean, I had those thoughts for, for, for some time now, uh, but after this pandemic, uh, they just uh, cleared out in my, in my head and, and I could see what I really want from this life, where I want to be. I, I want to travel around the world. Uh, I want to play concerts, but I want to go back to my home home, not the place which I call home somewhere in the world, but my actual home where I was born and where my people live. Before the pandemic, we were all, everyone was so busy, like constantly running around, always active. And so we do have these thoughts or these desires, you know, oh, it would be nice one day if I could, for example, for you, return to Armenia, or, you know, I wish I could do this one day, or I want to go there one day. And it's always this thing that seems kind of far away. And it's kind of hard to make a decision about it. But I think during the pandemic for a lot of us, because we had this time suddenly to actually like think about what we want in our lives and to yeah. kind of think about what our priorities are and also what's important in life. These answers or these decisions suddenly came so much easier and simpler in a way. I'm quite thankful actually to this, this pandemic because uh, it, it, uh, it allow, uh, allowed me to evaluate some some important things uh, in, in life what's important what's not so important and also to you know it made me realize that uh, sometimes we musicians who actively perform we forget that we're not only musicians you know we are we are a human beings which can have some some other things other than music in, in your life don't get me wrong i mean we are the luckiest people probably on earth because um, because we are musicians because we we can do what we love and that's our profession and that's our passion but um i actually after not playing concerts for so long i'm coming back on stage now with such a new and stronger hunger for mm -hmm. for music for stage. For last 10 years, 10, 15 years, uh, we've been performing over and over, over and over. I mean, all the time around the world, traveling and playing, traveling and playing. And at some point, it becomes um, automatic. You know, your feelings are becoming dull. I'm not saying that we are performing mechanically, but we don't appreciate every single performance, every single note and sound 
as much as I believe most of musicians appreciate it now. So I think that's one of the very, very good advantages of, of the pandemic. In a perspective of, you know, resting and, you know, getting, getting rested from your instrument and your instrument getting rested from you, it was for me priceless. I mean, I, I can tell you that in this pandemic, in those six months at least, the first six months, I rested so good that I, I never rested so well, like mentally oh. and psychologically and, and also physically. What brings us to a really unique situation in history is like going forward um, because we've had so many reflections over the past year. And I think by we, I'm not just talking about musicians, but also management, promoters, uh, venues, everyone just has had to stop and to reconsider, you know, how do we want to move forward? Now, many of us are kind of feeling like we're starting from a fresh place, which also means I feel, at least I feel that there are many more opportunities and we have more choices as musicians and also, we have a stronger desire to say, these are what I want to do in, in life and as a musician, what I want to say, and you know, to really kind of pave our own path forward instead mm -hmm. of just kind of going around in this autopilot machine that the whole industry was in. Going forward, are there things you for yourself wish to do differently or that you wish to see change in the um, performing arts world? I think uh, I'm at the stage of, of career and, at, and th at that age when I can allow myself, you know, to say few no's <laughs> and uh, say a few yeses. And, and yeah, I just, I just realized that um, I want to rebalance the ratio mm -hmm. of, of a regular normal life and uh, actively performing artist's life uh, if before it was like 90 to 10 towards actively performing artists now i want to make it at least 60 or 70 uh, to 30 or 40 um to to really be uh, to be able to enjoy life family loved ones and and um for me that's the change i want to see in in my life it doesn't mean that i i uh the career should not move forward it's actually it's even a bigger uh bigger um stimul to for career to move forward because if you play less concerts then the concerts you play has to be a good ones right. and in on in order to play to play what you really want you have to keep up with certain level in in your career or or reached a certain level and go higher and higher. Over the past year, we had so many digital performances and whether it be like a living room concert or, you know, a full production of an online concert. Do you think going forward, we will continue to have that wide digital platform? The digital performance never going to replace live performances. Uh, of course, when there is no possibility of live performances, uh, digital performance is a savior, both for musicians and for audiences. During these pandemics, I could see a, a big issue in that because, um, honestly speaking, financial issue, because, you know, there were many orchestras or government, uh, government funded organizations who were uh, streaming live and for free and and then there are freelance musicians who who want to make effort who want to record who want who who are willing to spend money on a you know cameraman the sound editing and everything to present a high quality product but they cannot compete with major orchestras who have that money and who are streaming for free so that that was for me a bit of an issue that some musicians or some groups were doing it too much and they were, they were ruining the concept of digital concerts during pandemics. Mm -hmm. If it's not during pandemics, if you have live concerts, you have your, your life, your profession, your career, your income, 
and just for fun you want to do some digital concerts that's fine but for many freelance musicians their life and their budget was they were hoping it will depend on digital concerts no matter how beautiful musicians always talk about music about arts and everything meaning of life you have to eat something you know <laughs> you you need money to buy food when the the things finally get back to normal and with live concerts then digital concerts will be at the same shelf like cds many music lovers who have a huge audio coll collection of recordings at home right but when that artist is in their city they don't say oh you know i have i have his recording i don't want to go to his concert no they they purchase the ticket the same moment uh, the announcement comes of the concert and they won't go to live concerts and the reason for that is that nothing can replace live performance even the highest quality digital recording or i don't know 360 cameras or interactive videos or whatever nothing can replace the live exchange of energies also the fact that the live performance is one and only it happened now it's magic and it's never going to happen again there's also been a lot of talk about how it will be for younger artists coming up now because there's been so much shift in like all of the concert planning for all the promoters and venues so much first we need to deal with all the cancellations and you know it's such a huge mess but then also taking care of and supporting the next generation of artists is hugely important i agree with you and also you know when there is one thing which if we talk about the industry uh mm -hmm. is that the management and the orchestras have a big responsibility now because there is a huge list of a b or c level musicians who are waiting for the concerts to return mm -hmm. uh, but there is also a huge list of young musicians who never been performing with high level orchestras and the task and the mission of those orchestras and those managements is to to find a perfect balance, how to reinvite the artists they know well, they love, and how to discover uh, a new artist. Because before it was a tough task, you know, before pandemics, because there, everyone wants to sell tickets. And the best way to sell tickets is to invite an artist who is known to the audience. So, but there were still some slots for younger, some programs like young talents programs with different orchestras, different halls. But now I feel that uh, it's we are in a danger of all those presenters uh, trying to make as much money back uh, right. to compensate what they lost, as much money back as possible by completely neglecting a young unknown musicians um, emerging emerging uh, uh, musicians, you know, and, and that's for me uh, a danger, which, uh, which is, is, is sort of a, a debate uh, between uh, financial interests and moral for, for, for those organizations, you know, who, right. who are in charge and who are in power to, to now to support uh, younger colleagues of ours. What's your favorite Zentrio memory? If any. <laughs> if any. If any. <laughs> you know, it's actually when you ask that question, I had this hurricane in my in my head. It, it's it's not like the empty space in my head, but the, rather a hurricane because there's so so many funny moments. Uh, uh, it's it's hard for me to point out one particular moment or maybe i'm forgetting something because we always have a lot of fun in our tours and even during recordings i mean recording is something you know where you have to be serious you know you're getting there you know the microphones are all over the place and you know you, know, you get a little bit nervous but our recordings is just a lot of fun and mm -hmm. i don't know do you have a favorite memory i mean i have many favorites um memories but i i agree with you like no matter where we are or what situation we're in 
I think we always make the best of it and or, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're always just having fun along the way and um yeah in recording studios I think yeah our producer and engineer have to listen to us like talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot most of the recording <laughs> 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 definitely <laughs> well thank you so much for joining me today for this conversation thanks for for doing this i think it's a wonderful idea and it's uh it's a pleasure to be your first guest and looking forward to seeing you um having a meaningful and valuable conversation with other people other yes. wonderful wonderful intellectual people like you are <laughs> thank you so much yeah and i look forward to seeing you hopefully soon we can reschedule our um centrio tour fingers um, crossed for them <laughs> <laughs> all right take care thanks so much thank you take care mm -hmm.